Okay, this is Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies, and what we're going to do is show you uh, a natural spray to make that uh, aphids, mites, and other insects will hate. Now, there's only one negative into making a natural spray. The negative is that it's not a toxic poison that's going to stay on the plants for a time period. I'm sure you've been to Home Depot or other stores or nurseries and say they have a vegetable garden spray, kills bucks up bugs up to 30 days, kills bugs up to 90 days. Keep in mind when you're using a natural spray, it's going to kill things for probably that day and maybe the next, and then it's going to start breaking down and wearing off, because that's because you don't want poisons in your food. Plus, when you use pesticides, they kill everything good and bad bugs. Now, people think of good bugs as ladybugs and praying mantises and stuff like that. I want you to keep in mind that aphids and spider mites, especially, are very, very tiny and they really don't have a defense mechanism against anything. Anything can eat them because they're so friggin' tiny. So, what I used to do on my property here, you know, in my nursery and in my grow area out there where you see the nets over the big pots and back there, is before I brought the plants on my property, I figured I'm going to do nuclear wasteland. So I would, since I'm, not the plants aren't here, I would spray the whole ground from my house to the fence, to the fence, to the fence. And I figured if I killed every living insect around, then I would, uh, the bugs would have to start from scratch. They'd have to come all the way over from my neighbors and populate in the spring. And I thought that was the way to go. <clears throat> this year I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I stayed completely natural. And I have less aphids and now than ever before. And the only place I have mites is on my plants out in the front of the house. I know they'll come, but they haven't come yet. So, this is what you do. You see these clusters of garlic? Five or six whole clusters of garlic. What you want to do, this is the day before. So it's going to take two days to make this stuff up. The day before, you are going to smash up this garlic, smash it, break it up. You can use a food processor or a high-speed blender. Just add a little bit of water because it's pretty dry. Put the whole thing in, skins and everything. Smash it all up. And then you're going to add it to a pot of boiling water like this. About a six-quart pot, okay? So you don't need to make a batch this big. If you've only got a couple pepper plants or a couple garden plants, um, you don't need to make a batch this big. You can go with a pot half this size and use probably you know one or two whole clumps, clusters of garlic. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to get the water to a rolling boil. I mean a real heavy duty boil. And then you want to add your garlic, all smashed up garlic into it, cover it up with a cover and let it steep and set till the next day all right now when you do this put the pot outside in your garage your back patio because if you do this in your house and you let it sit all day in your house your house is gonna smell like garlic for a couple days so to avoid that after you get the water boiling add the garlic take it outside let it sit outside somewhere your yard your patio whatever but not in the house because unless you love garlic smell so let it steep Okay, then the next day, get a plastic container. This is an old cheese ball container, and uh, <coughs> put a Home Depot strainer bag over it, a strainer net bag. Um, hold on, I'll grab one and I'll show you. So, this is a paint strainer bag from Home Depot. Uh, you could also use cheesecloth or a woman's stocking, and you'll pour your, <coughs> your water from your pot here in through this. So you can strain out all the stuff so you don't clog up your sprayer. Now you've got your garlic water. Now the second thing you want to make the day before, you want to just take a coffee mug, you know, about this size coffee mug, fill it with water, and, you know, microwave it. Or you could boil water in the stove and then add it to the cup. But get the water boiling hot in the coffee cup, and then add about a tablespoon of hot pepper powder. You can go with cayenne, that's fine. If you want to add ghost or, or scorpion or something, that's even better. And then you want to let that steep and sit overnight. 
as well. And then when you want to use it, <coughs> when you pour it into your mixture, you can make your mixture in another container if you want. For instance, what I'm going to tell you is that, you know, like not everybody's going to want to use a hose sprayer. So if you're going to use a little pump sprayer like this, you probably want to add about half of this with water because you don't want your mixture to be too strong. And the other ingredients, I'll tell you how, to, how much I would put in here if you're going to use a little hand pump sprayer like this that you can buy at Home Depot or a hardware store or even a, some grocery stores might have them. So that's going to change the whole ball game because you got to use less and you got to dilute. All right, you want to use a hose sprayer, it's going to dilute. So, okay, so we're going to do the hose sprayer thing. For you guys who got like 20, 30 pepper plants or a big garden, we're going to show you the hose sprayer application. So we've got our garlic water ready to go. We've got our hot pepper water ready to go, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a hose sprayer like this, and you want to get the hose sprayer that has dilutions on it. So when the water runs through this, You've got one ounce per gallon, tablespoon per gallon. What I'm going to recommend is you can go as low as two ounce per gallon dilution with your mixture in here, or you've got a heavy infestation, you want to hit it hard, you want to go stronger formula, go four ounce per gallon, okay? Three to four ounce per gallon. So what you're going to do is this hose sprayer, you're going to add in garlic water up to probably about there, okay? Then get a natural oil soap, like Murphy's oil soap, or Dr. Bronner's oil soap. If this soap makes contacts on the aphids or mites or white flies, it kind of dissolves their outer skin. And this is a natural soap. You could pretty much drink it. Well, you'd probably throw up, but it's not toxic at all. Uh, so, And soap also suffocates insects. So you're going to go <coughs> almost 80% of your garlic water. And then you're going to add in, you know, probably a half a cup of that hot pepper water and pour it through a strainer bag into your sprayer. Do everything with a strainer bag. You want your sprayers to never get clogged, whether it's a pump sprayer or it's a strainer like this. Make your mixture, to, every bit of your mixture goes through a strainer bag. This way, you don't clog up your sprayer. All right. Now, the other two ingredients that I add to my sprayer is I go one ounce of peppermint oil and... A lot of the insects that bother your plants hate peppermint. If peppermint makes contact with them, it'll kill most of your insects. But it also messes up their brain. In other words, the pheromones, the scents, the same scents that perfume manufacturers count on, the same scents that attract insects and animals to one another, are called pheromones. And you can look that up and Google it if you don't know what pheromones is. If it's too big of a word or you don't understand the science of it. It starts P H E R. Uh, pheromone okay so you just look it up and so you want to add like an ounce of peppermint oil to the sprayer and then the other oil I get is rosemary oil okay now you want to add an ounce of that as well now rosemary is the enemy of spider mites if rosemary makes a contact with mites or spider mites it'll kill it on contact okay but rosemary also has a strong scent now the pheromones that are in these insects brain that these insects brains respond to get short circuited and go kind of crazy when there's too much of these strong scents around on the plants. So these strong scents will stay on the plants probably for a good three or four days and then they'll wear off. And the insects, they smell that smell and it confuses them. It messes with their head. Just think about taking an old, old, old lady to a slash metal concert and have her sit in the front row. It's probably going to drive her nuts. Well, that's what's happening to the insects when you use essential oils like rosemary, eucalyptus, lemon, peppermint, clove, cinnamon. But I'm using rosemary and, and I'm using peppermint, okay? I researched and these are two of the better oils that kind of bug most of the insects. Now... This essentially Kate's peppermint oil I bought on Amazon <clears throat> for about 12 bucks. If you're, if, you, if you're a Prime member, it was ship free, so it was about 12 bucks free shipping, four ounces. So that means I can load my sprayer four times with this. And my sprayer can get a couple of hundred plants if I have it at two to three ounces per gallon. 
And the rosemary I also got on Amazon for about 12 bucks. And here's the brand name, Morning Pep. Four ounces. So this is about $24 investment. This is the most expensive thing in making up my spray for the hose sprayer or a hand sprayer. Now, if you're gonna go use a hand sprayer, I'd go with about, I'd make half of this your garlic water and chili pepper water. I'd put in like three or four ounces of the oil soap, Murphy's or whatever, and I'd put in maybe about 10 drops of each oil. Because this isn't getting diluted by anything. So you don't want stuff too strong because pure, pure oils would burn your plant. And also you want to apply just before dark, just like now, all right? Or in the dark. If you got one of those headlamps where you can see stuff in the dark, then that's cool, all right? So you want to add it to your sprayer, okay? So you got the garlic water, the oil soap, about 20% oil soap, a few ounces of the hot pepper strained water, an ounce of the rosemary, an ounce of the peppermint, and you put it in a sprayer like this. And there's other model sprayers. And then you go anywhere from two ounce per gallon setting up to four ounce, depending on how strong you want it to be. And then this is what you do with your plants. Now this is an ortho dial sprayer, and you can see it's got the ounce gallons on it, and I got it at four ounce per gallon. Uh, it's empty, it has nothing in it, all right? Um, but I just wanted to show you what I do with the plants. So my plants are under the netting. I don't even have to lift the netting up. This is on a four ounce ga per gallon dilution. And I just go like this on the plants with my mixture, okay? So I'm literally like, it's like I'm washing my car, okay? And I make sure to really pause at the top of the plants because that's where the aphids like to converge is at the top, near the tender new young growth. And I also go in the pots a little bit, you know, because they're gonna fall off and go in the dirt. All right? Now, so that's how I apply my mixture with a hose sprayer. If it was a hand sprayer, you know, you just pump, 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 spray, spray, spray. Okay? Now, I wanna show you another method of insect control, okay? And this is real simple, and it really costs nothing but your time, okay? I have this dial-in sprayer, you know, it's got soaker setting, shower setting, and then it's got this setting called, let's see if I can get it, flat, okay? If you have the time, what I've learned about aphids, uh, talking to an insect scientist and an insect expert at Arbico Organics, which is where I buy my predatory insects, and they're very knowledgeable. And you know what? You get a live person every time you call them. You don't go through a stupid phone menu or talk to somebody from another country. No offense to people from other countries, but you speak to somebody that you can understand and they can understand you. So if you have aphids, when they first come to your garden in the spring or summer, they're flying. Okay? Then the flying aphids establish a colony on your plants. And then all the aphids that are on your plants are flightless. The only time there'll be more flying aphids is if they come from somewhere else or the colony on your plants gets too big, it gets too big, and then they just make some more flightless ones to take off and move on because it's too crowded. So while they're flightless, if you were to do this like every night or every other night with this setting on the sprayer, it's flat, and I'll show you, it's like more high powered. If you were to do this to your plant, <clears throat> I mean thoroughly, now you want to have them staked, otherwise you'll knock them over and they might break. Minor stake. And just blast the living crap out of them. These aphids are flightless. Now I've got a mosquito net, which probably stops them from blowing away. But if you blast them off onto the ground, uh, it's very hard for them to get back up. Okay? Now, if you have ants that are starting to bring them up, because ants smell aphid a mile away and they come, what you want to do is you want to put out ant baits. And the ant bait, bait I use is Terra 8 ant bait. And we'll run over to my grow area over here real quick to show you one. And you want to put it where you see the trail of ants coming. And it's the kind of ant bait that the ants are going to bring back to the colony. And hopefully they feed it to the queen and the queen eats it. And then bye-bye ants. So there's the Terra ant bait. So you can buy a bunch of these for a couple bucks and stick them around where you see ants, okay? Because that's how you want to kill ants. Again, if you spray poison all over the place, 
then you're going to kill other bugs that might eat the aphids or mites that are coming to your area. All right? <clears throat> Pause this a second. Okay, so now we're going to talk about another aspect of in insect control, which is using the use of predatory insects. So let me grab some stuff from Arbico Organics in Arizona. And these are beneficial nematodes. And beneficial nematodes are microscopic worms that attack bad insects that go live in the ground. Okay? So what you do with beneficial nematodes, and these are the three different species of nematodes that Arbico Organics carries, and you can buy them for anywhere from 20 something dollars to a lot. I mean, I spent about 80 bucks on these and they were shipped free. <clears throat> and basically what you do is, the reason why I've got three different species of nematodes is different nematodes go after different insects. Okay, so it looks like a powder, right? So let me show you. Same sprayer that I just showed you, the ortho sprayer, and you take a pinch like this, a pinch. So I would take a pinch of each one of these, put them in the ortho sprayer, four ounce per gallon, shake it up and mix it up, you know, let this mix in the water, okay? You can keep these in the fridge for a few days, but not for a long time. If you do keep them in the fridge beyond a few days, they say they start losing their viability or life. And if you're going to put them back in the fridge and not use them in one time, then you want to put them in a Ziploc bag. Because if they dry out, they die. If they keep moist, they, they stay alive. That's why they come in these sealed packets, okay? So these microscopic worms go after every pest that goes in the soil. That's fleas, that's cutworms, that's hornworms, that's whiteflies, that's thrips, that's uh, little uh, caterpillars. All the bugs that have a life cycle where, you know, they have a life cycle, egg, worm, butterfly, whatever the life cycle is. And when they go into the soil, the nematodes sense them and go into their body through their mouth, their butt, whatever, and they poison them, kill them, and then lay their eggs in them and then make more nematodes. So what you do with the nematodes at the beginning of season is you mix them up in a sprayer, about a pinch, you know, a good size pinch, and put the sprayer on four ounce per gallon, and you soak your pots or your ground with it. Now, if you have pretty dry ground and really warm weather, like in the southwest right now, what you want to do is you want to come out with your hose, and you want to soak, 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 soak your ground before dark. Really, really, really get it soaked. Because the nematodes are going to establish better if the ground stays moister longer. So you don't want to just spray them into dry ground you, or, or a dry pot or a dry raised bed. You want to water it down really, really thorough, get it nice and wet, then come back, load your sprayer, and then apply. And there's millions in these packages. Millions. They're microscopic. There's millions of them. And... They populate. In other words, they make more nematodes, more nematodes, more nematodes, more nematodes. But you want to do it right before dark. If you do it in the middle of the sun, the ones that are exposed to the sun will die before they even get to make, go down to the soil and make their home. Nematodes is one of the best methods of flea, flea control. Because when you spray poisons with fleas, they keep coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. And other animals will bring them onto your property, like rats, squirrels, possums, whatever. Or, uh, or the next door neighbor's dogs. But if you have nematodes in the soil, when the fleas migrate over to your soil and go in your soil, the nematodes will go after them. And then you've got nematodes that lay in wait. There's, you've got neem seek and you've got neem attack, and there's two kinds of neem attack, all right? You can read all about these on Arbico Organics. You can read all about how nematodes work, what, kind of, what are, kinds of nematodes there are, what they go after. You can read all about it. There's tons of information about it on the web. <clears throat> so nematodes will get, will help you fight most of your pests that go live in the soil. It's too bad aphids don't live in the soil, and mites go in the soil a little bit, but not enough much. So for them, you need to go with a spray or predatory insects. Now, predatory insects. If you live in the Southwest, it is highly recommended that you do not get ladybugs because ladybugs do not like hot, dry temps over 88 degrees. If they can survive and stick around in that, they usually die after a while. So you throw away your money on ladybugs. 
My recommend and, and I don't recommend praying mantis because they go after big bugs once they start growing up. But praying mantises don't go hunt. They wait for something to walk by and they eat it. They're opportunistic feeders. <clears throat> so the best pest control bug I recommend is lace wings. And lace wings, you'll get a container. It looks like sawdust or ground cornmeal. And it's lace wing eggs. It's better to get lace wing eggs. And you just take a pinch. You know, like that pinch I showed you, the nematode powder? And you just take a pinch and throw it on your plants every few feet. And that's going to be hundreds and hundreds of lacewing eggs. Now, one of the reasons why people don't buy lacewings is, you know, they don't really see them like ladybugs. Because the lacewing larvae, not the adults, the adults look like winged fairy katydids, but tiny. The larvae, or the baby lacewings, they, they go after, really go after mites, aphids, anything on the leaves. They just go, they're just really, really great hunters. So you want to release your lace wings at night on your plants. And if you water your plants a little bit, spray them down and make the environment wet. You do the same thing with ladybugs. You know, it's good to have a wet environment. And they will hatch anywhere from five to ten days after you get them in the mail. All right. Right now, it's uh, July 9th, 2017. And right now, uh, Arbicore Organics is having a special on lace wings. You can get 10,000 eggs for about 37 bucks. 10,000 is a lot. And they also have a ship thing where they'll ship it to you every two weeks, every week, and you can get them for cheaper. So you get 10,000, then two weeks later, get another 10,000, two weeks later, get another 10,000. And right now the special is free shipping. So it's free shipping. <clears throat> and that's at Arbico Organics in Arizona. So now the lace wings hunt. Also the lace wings do not mind the dry heat. They do not mind the temperatures getting up to a hundred and something degrees. Okay? When they become adults, if there's flowers on your pepper plants or other vegetables, they'll stick around because they'll eat the honeydew and pollen out of the flowers. <clears throat> if there's honeydew, that sticky stuff aphids leave behind, they'll eat that. If there's nothing to eat, the adults will leave. If there's flowers opening, the adults will stay, they'll lay more eggs, and the, the new cycle of lace wings begins. So, about 10,000 lacewing eggs, but you just take a tiny pinch because they come in a small container and you just don't want to dump them out. 10,000 on one set of plants. You want to like put a little pinch on maybe each plant at nighttime, make sure the plant's wet. So lacewings are one of the best predator insects, okay? If you live in the southeast or places that get regular rain during the summer and the temperatures really don't go too much above 80, maybe you're coastal, then, you know, ladybugs will be good. But if you had ladybugs and lacewings, that would be great. Other bugs that you can buy from them are assassin bugs, and they hunt. <clears throat> and they have predatory mites and stuff like that. But predatory mites are very expensive because uh, they have to ship them overnight. And they're expensive. They're like 80 bucks for like 50 or 100. But if they get in a colony established, they'll go after all the mites. Arbico Organics has a wide range of insects predatory insects, probably more than anybody else in the country. And they're good people, and they stand behind their stuff. And uh, I've been using them now for about seven, eight years. And I've used their stuff before, didn't know what I was doing. But now I'm more educated. So <clears throat> watch the video again if you have to. I just showed you a way to make a spray to make bugs' lives miserable and kill them. Um, and also just misting your plants, blasting them really hard with water will knock them off. Also, mites do not like wet. wet. So if you were to like spray your plants down with water every night, uh, mites don't like that. They don't like a wet environment. Aphids do, but mites don't. But when you're doing it, you're blasting the aphids off because they can't hang on and they can't fly back. <laughs> All right? So I use the nematodes for a whole bunch of pests that go in the soil. And I use the sprays to knock down the population. <clears throat> if you're going to use the, this type of spray, I would recommend that you use this type of spray to decimate the population for maybe a week or so. Use it every like couple days, right? And then after that, blast your plants like every other day with water to knock things off. And then release your lace wings. You know, don't, don't. Don't put this uh, essential oil spray, which probably could harm lacewing babies, on your plants 
the day after you release your lace wings. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to knock down the population. You want to you want to you want to hurt things, get the population down, and then release your lace wings or ladybugs or whatever. Okay. So that's it for Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies. I hope this video is informative and helps you guys out. My website's www.superhotchilies.com. We sell plants, April chili plants, April through the middle of August. Seeds, dried pepper powders, wholesale and retail online. Fresh peppers, you got to contact me a year in advance and I have some farmers grow for me and ship to you. Um, so any questions, you can always email me or contact me, but this is how I make my stuff. This is where I buy my stuff. And um, that's about it. Have a great day. It's going to take about two hours to upload this video. I hope it helps some of you because it has helped me. Take care.